Reverb is the most used effect by mixing engineers, no matter what genre of music you're working with. But using too much or the wrong kind of reverb can ruin your mix. The first time you put reverb on your mix, did it sound like this? Okay, maybe that was an exaggeration, but I wanted to make a video for new Pro Tools users to properly set up their reverb effects. Sometimes people start mixing with reverb by applying it directly as an insert on the channel that they want to apply reverb. The problem with this method is that it's difficult to balance the level of reverb in your mix. So the main way I usually apply reverb is with an auxiliary track. To do that, we're going to need to send our signal out. In this case, I want to add reverb to my vocal track. We need to send it through a bus. You could pick any one of these, but since Pro Tools automatically creates some extra buses named Reverb, let's pick one of those. I'm going to select Verb 1 2 Stereo. When this window pops up, don't forget to turn this fader up. This is important. See, each of these sins has a level attached to it with a little fader. I'll start by setting the fader to zero. Now I know that the signal is being sent out because of this meter. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she wonderful? One extra tip here. If you're using a stereo bus, then you'll get a pan knob here. I usually like to hit this button, which links the pan knob to your track. Okay, so now the signal is being sent out, but we need to pick it up on an aux track. Let's create a new track. We want a stereo aux input, and I'm going to go ahead and name it Verb. Now we need to pick up our signal that's being sent by matching the input of our Verb track to the bus we used, named Verb12. This is how aux channels work. Audio is sent through an aux channel in real time. Now we can go up and add Reverb as an insert. I'm going to use Dverb because that's the basic decent sounding reverb plugin that comes standard on Pro Tools. There are several advantages to setting up reverb as an aux channel like this. We get the best of both worlds by keeping our dry signal. Isn't she lovely? And we get to adjust our completely wet signal with a fader. Isn't she warm? Isn't she precious? This gives us total control of our reverb sound. I could EQ my reverb track to cut out some low end if it starts sounding muddy. That's just one example. And last but not least, I could send other tracks to my reverb using the same bus. This works really well on acoustic music to create the sonic image that musicians are playing together live in the same space. Okay, I want to show you one quick way to do all of that. When you're selecting which bus to use up here in the sends, you can just hit new track and this will automatically link your send to a new aux track. Go ahead and name it and don't forget to turn the bus up. Then if you want to add other channels to this reverb track, just copy your send over to those other tracks. We're going to explore reverb further in some other videos and I'll give you some tips that I use when I'm mixing. For now, hopefully that was helpful to you as you learn to mix with reverb. Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss those other videos. Thanks. Oh, 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 oh,